Hey, 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 welcome back to Neckbeardia. This is Garbro with another story. It is gonna be a nice little parallel between the other story that you guys are already aware of, the Necron Isekai. And well, Neckbeardia went and found himself another little s s different flavor, I suppose, of, uh, of Isekai. But it's up to me to voice it, and I'm gonna do my best to do it. But for this story... We're saving Private Monkai. Be me, 100 year old Eldar. Live on a very minor craft world with a nobility and royalty styled ruling system. The craft world was separated into parts all controlled by dukes who as well had their territory split and controlled by lower rank nobility and so on. The dukes formed the high council where they decided whatever happens in the craft world and overseeing them was the royal family. I was born into one of the duke houses, which was both a blessing and a terrible curse. I started on the path of the thought talker as soon as I could to the dismay of my father. Ended up mastering it surprisingly fast and with none of the feared warp accidents. Since I had nothing left to do regarding that path, I ended up leaving it for the path of the scholar. However, as time passed, I kept getting a weird gut feeling of sorts that something was missing, that something was wrong. Soon enough, the feeling started getting worse, and I started realizing what it was. It was dread. It was an incredibly powerful feeling of dread looming over me, gripping at my very soul. I tried to ask some Eldar I knew that were on the path of the warrior to help me train as an extra path of sorts. Told them it was due to a feeling I had an urge to get better at fighting. They were not entirely convinced, so I told them it was because I was denied my request to enter the path of the warrior. It took a while, but I managed to convince them to help me. Things were going well. I was picking up a lot of things regarding fighting during the extra lessons I was taking. Others were getting worried that I was overworking myself. I assured them that I was fine and that there is a very important thing I must accomplish. They seemed satisfied with this answer and left me to my studies and work. Things seemed to have been going well for quite a few years, the feeling of dread having all but disappeared. All until one day when it got worse. Much, much worse. I do not believe I've ever panicked that badly before and I hope that I will never panic like that again. Thankfully, the others did not notice. I calmed myself down over the course of a few days and came upon an epiphany of sorts, a feeling I had on what I needed to do. I have left my path again. My father was not happy about it, but dealing with the nobility of the craft world requires one to be very good at sweet talking, and thankfully, I was well aware how my father and the ability of my craft world worked, so convincing my father and the questioning nobles was not quite a breeze. The new path that I have entered was one my father really wasn't excited about. The witch path, or the path of the seer was, in the craft world, considered the hardest and most dangerous path one could take. Hence, there were a very small amount of Eldar that are on that path in the craft world. However, this time it is different than when I chose the path of the Thought Talker, which is considered one of the safest ones you could take when it comes to using the powers of the warp. This time, I was doing something a lot riskier. I was trying to explore my own mind, to pick at it, and find whatever causes these weird feelings. As time passed, I also started helping and learning from the Bone Singers, one of the very few branches of the path of the Seer that aren't considered some kind of taboo or evil thing. I've been getting some weird visions of sorts, of things, whatever they are. Some moving images, some weird little trinkets, along with weird drawings of creatures and warriors. It was an odd thing, as they seemed more like memories than anything else. I avoided mentioning it to the others, especially my teachers, as I've already caused enough trouble, and I would like my father not to have more reason to think I am possessed by something. I did, however, write them all down in a journal to keep note of them all. As time passed, something else happened. While meditating and trying to figure out just what exactly is going on in my head, I did actually manage to find something. It felt like a seal of sorts, not like any I've ever seen before. 
It was not exactly like everything related to the seals and locks was supposed to be. It felt chaotic. Like it was there, but also not there. In a way, it reminded me of the way the warp is. But as I tried to prod it, I got a response I was not expecting. The seal broke, and with it, memories appeared. Memories that felt very familiar. But eventually, I realized it. They were my memories. Memories I knew all too well and were even more familiar to me than the ones I lived in this life. I now know who I was and what I am. I was human and now I'm a space elf in one of the worst settings possible. This caused me a sense of urgency and I did confirm something. According to the records, I should be in the early Great Crusade era. Something slowly dawned on me, which could save a lot of trouble and bullshit from happening. I could potentially try and prevent the heresy to save humanity. But there is a very big question on my mind. Should I prevent it? I am not human anymore. I have no reason to care about their fate. On the other hand, preventing it could help me, and Eldar in general by quite a lot maybe even potentially help save our dying race. It's quite obvious on what I will try to do. I have to try and prevent the heresy from happening. I am biased after all. My preparations have started since quite a while now, but the others are starting to be suspicious of me, especially those on the path of the seer under the royal family. I think they've caught on that I possess something I am not supposed to have. My worries were proven true when I've started to notice quite a few Eldar spying on me at different times. Others who I haven't really talked with before have been trying to get friendly with me. So I started preparing. Found out where each type of ship could be found and learned to pilot them, is what I wish I could say. Turns out I'm incredibly bad at flying those things, especially the bigger ones. But I don't really have much I can do, since there are very few people I can trust in this place. From them, I could narrow it down to a few who would even consider helping and coming with me in the worst case scenario. First is Karanzis. He is a lot older than me, though I'm not entirely sure by how much. He has known me since I was young, after all. He used to spoil me with gifts and stories about the things and people he encountered in his youth, not unlike a spoiling uncle. Karanzis used to be an outcast for quite a lot of years. Some of the stories he told me were even hinting at him being a corsair for a while. He was amused when I asked him that, so I assume I was right in my assumption. He's come back since a long time ago, became a striking scorpion, and has been one since. Karanzis became an exarch when I was very young, and he was, in a way, proud of it. My praises and awe of his stories and achievements sure helped him feel that way. As for others, well, I do not know any other Eldar that would side with me when things finally go to shit. Technically, there's also Yilith, but I am unsure about her in general. She's a howling banshee, and for all the things that she's done, I should trust her. She has helped me every time I've had any issues. She was always incredibly friendly with me, hid things I did so as to not get me in trouble. And she even took the blame for some of them. But there's just one thing. She's way too friendly, way too nice to me, and incredibly sincere, but I cannot fathom why. So I was suspicious of her, even with all her actions and behavior. After a bit of thinking, I decided that if she offers to join, then I shall happily allow it. Do you have any idea how many people I would kill for a howling banshee Eldar waifu? Do you have any idea? I would slaughter half this fucking planet for a chance at it. Ugh. Fucking is it, guys. Hey guys, so are you looking to spice up your game night? Do you need some orcs to raid your camp? Do you need some elephids to suck out your brains? Do you need some undead to rise from the graves? What about a dragon to slap down in the table and fuck up your players with? Or if you prefer a frost giant or a manticore, we got him. It's a lot more fun than dropping rocks in your players' heads. Or maybe you just want short stacks. Because we know you love them. <laughs>
We have such an expansive range of fantasy options and we're currently trying to expand into not 40k. (laughs) Also, if models isn't your thing, go check out our subclasses. There's loads of stuff there that you might find interesting. But go ahead and check it out. Links are all down below and let's get back into the video. I may or may not have made myself even more suspicious with what I've done. Since I've technically become a bone singer from all the times I've helped them, I decided to create something to help me relax and take my mind off the doomed future of the universe and soothe my ever-growing anxiety. I have created miniatures with paints. Of course, I did have the foresight to only create Eldar units so as to avoid even more suspicion, along with avoiding making special characters. Surprisingly, they quickly became incredibly popular. Even without actually recreating the war game itself, the Eldar happily assembling and painting them. It made me quite happy. But I quite quickly realized that I've made a mistake. A very grave and suspicious one. I'll bet I realized that making other units and factions would become very suspicious. What I did not foresee is that certain units and constructs are the royal family's secret trump cards. Nobody outside of the direct royal family even knows about them, let alone did they see them. How I realized this? Well, Karanzus was nice enough to tell me that I'm being observed by a lot of agents and assassins from the royal family. Another thing that was a bit worrying was the fact that Karanzus somehow noticed this without alerting them at all. For a second, I worried. But this was Karanzus. He has always been with me and helped me no matter what. So I refuse to even think that he's working against me. Thankfully, creating and making the miniatures did help with my ever-growing anxiety, along with the added bonus of the other nobility liking me a bit more. I've also started another project that will be a lot more challenging to accomplish, but will end up into quite a fun pastime. On a more annoying note, my father is pushing engagements and fiancés on me. I know he really doesn't like me, but it is getting annoying at how obvious his intent is. All of the fiancés are either from influential families or very wealthy, and most have very better reputations and personalities. So I tried to confront him about it. Father, you cannot be serious. Of course I'm serious. You need a fiancé. You should have already had one quite a while ago. But I neither want nor need one right now. Father slams his fist on the desk. I do not want to hear that from you, Jester. I've already had enough problems because of you and your stupid creations and shenanigans. My name is not Jester, and I... Silence. I finish my point. Leave. Very well. Simple to say that my talk to my father did not go well. But if I did not have ways to postpone this into oblivion, then I would have no right to even be alive in this craft world. This is no good. I had what I think was a dream, but it felt different. It might have been an omen, or a vision. I reviewed on the last things I did lately. I attended the ball with Karanz as I was hosted by the first princess, where I was forced to dance with both the princes and the princesses. Karanz slipped away so he managed to avoid the nobles present. He had quite a nice laugh at my expense, knowing my distaste for such events and dancing. The bastard even forced me to dance with him. I hate dancing. I left towards the garden after escaping from the nobles' endless pestering and bickering about such and such miniature. I met with Yilith there and had a long chat with her. It was quite pleasant. She did manage to convince me to dance with her. I still hate dancing. Afterwards, I went back and reunited with Karanzas to head back to his villa. Now that I think back on it, he seemed quite alert, although he was hiding it really well. If I hadn't known him all my life, then I doubt I would have realized it. If I look back and analyze what I saw that night, uh, I see it now. I was being followed the entire time. There were Eldar tailing me and probably noting down everything I said and did. Let me see if I can zoom in. Huh, I can. Quite an interesting thing to do. Yep, it's confirmed. The head of the royal family herself is after me. It was her personal unit. This is not good. I'm going to need a plan. And fast. My relaxing oriented project was going well. 
I have managed to create a computer console thing, and I'm currently working on creating games for it. Yes, I'm creating video games. Shouldn't I be worried about my life currently? Well, yes, but I need to stave off boredom somehow, don't I? But on a serious note, yes I have to do this is very important. Just think about all it could help with. It can help strategize and simulate all kinds of situations and also waste time during travel. So yes, it's very important that this is high on my priority list. Oh, and Yilith has been hanging around me quite a bit lately. I think she wants my help with something. I did eventually ask her about it after the third week she kept visiting daily. Turns out she wants to help my project. How nice of her. Together, I did manage to create a game way before my schedule. It was pretty much Tetris. The way Yilith's eyes shined when she saw it working was quite an amusing sight. Even more entertaining was the way Kranzis acted when he saw it in motion. The old Eldar was both bewildered and impressed that I've managed all this using Wraithbone. Working with Wraithbone is a very interesting thing. It's like trying to shape a blob with your mind. You can also use your hands to help in it, but I found that it's very counterproductive for me at least. I'm quite surprised at how versatile Wraithbone is. There are so many things I can do with it. I was thinking of making myself some armor and weapons as well. Maybe a custom design. I'll bet that would be heresy. Bah, I'm already considered a heretic in this craft world, so who cares? I wonder how exactly should I make it? It'll probably add some parts from some of the other aspect armors. I did notice that it seems different than other materials. I just can't pinpoint how exactly. I will have to continue studying it to uncover more about it. Sadly, my fun and pursuit of silly projects ended quite abruptly. The royal family, along with the dukes, my own family included, have started pressuring me. So I was forced into all the balls, tea parties and whatnot, hosted by the noble families. To make matters worse, I am losing all my free time. My supposed fiancés keep appearing without me getting many notice and trying to spend time with me which is pretty much bugging me and trying to pry whatever information they can from me. Of course, they aren't doing it openly. It's all games and half-truths with them. It is extremely exhausting to even talk with these Eldar for five minutes, let alone hours on end. The issue is, they are getting more and more impatient and putting less effort into hiding their motives. I almost got attacked twice already when they lost their temper. But what really broke the last straw for me was the meeting with the queen. It was then I realized just how fucked I am. So many tiny movements and messages that signaled just how pissed off she was. This has caused my already off the roof anxiety to skyrocket even harder. I had at least 10 panic attacks just that night. Oh, and here's the thing about Eldar and the differences between them and humans. Eldar emotions are amplified, by a lot of that. For me, it's even worse. I went from an anxiety-ridden bipedal Mon Kai, I mean, monkey, to a space elf with so much anxiety that it started affecting my surroundings. My pot of plants are now also getting anxiety because of it. It is a disturbing sight, to be honest. A plant squirming, twisting and contorting on its own and seeming to grow and become smaller by its own. Did I mention that the writhing causes it to make noises? Because it's one of the most horrific sounds I've heard. So, this can mean one thing. Eldar emotions are fucking terrifying. Or there's something wrong with me, which there certainly is. But I also have a small sliver of hope that I'm not going to discover more things that signal me being an abomination. I've been trying everything I can think of to try and get the royals off me, but to no avail. I was already rushing to think of a plan, of something that might work. But as invitations and pressure got worse, I started making more plans. More tricks and hijinks to help me in the case things finally go down. To make matters even worse, my own family is in on it, so I can't even take a break at home. How wonderful. Hopefully Karanzas helps me when it all finally goes to shit. It can all go wrong so fast, so suddenly. 
that there's an almost minuscule chance of escaping, which can only be achieved through perfect planning and skill, or pure luck in having someone incredibly skilled bail your own sorry ass out of danger. And that's the end of this part of Saving Private Mon Kai. If you like these stories and others like them, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to Neckbeardia. Also be sure to stop by the Neckbeardia miniature store and get yourself some of them big old thick ass titty waifus that we all know you want. Don't lie. We know what lies inside your heart. Also, if you like original stories, Put out through the week, narrated by multiple narrators. Stop by Garbeardia, where I live. That little cave in the corner next to Neckbeardia's mansion. I'm, 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 down, I'm down that way. Yeah. Anywho, thank you for listening. And until I see you next time on this side of the veil, this has been Garbro. This is Neckbeardia. <laughs>